subscribe, subscribe, build me up to a thousand people right now, please, I'm desperate. Hi, Jared Hoyman with VisibleTour.com and today I'm going to help you make photos that look like this look like this, exposing the windows perfectly. And guess what? It's like super easy. So let's get into it. All right. So right now we are in Lightroom and to give you a background, I use Lightroom 5. I have not upgraded to CC, although I use Creative Cloud for other things like Premiere Pro and After Effects, I do not use it for photos. Maybe I should get on board. I don't know. I mean, maybe not. It hasn't really, it hasn't been a need for me and I've been making pretty decent money um, without it. So anyways, what you're going to do is the rooms that we're going to focus on is this room, this angle. And what I do is when I go in, I always shoot from corners of rooms because then you shoot out and you can really see what it looks like it looks good uh, so this one we're in the corner of the kitchen shooting outwards towards what would be the dining room the living room the entry this was on a 16 millimeter on a full frame canon 6d so it's a nice wide angle picks up a lot of shots the only downfall of this photo besides we have not you know touched it in editing yet is that you cannot see out the windows um, and everybody wants to see out the windows and they want to see that it's super clear and nice. So this is what I do. I shoot bracketed photos in three, but guess what? You get to the underexposed photo, the middle one, and you still can barely see out the windows. There's detail at least around the trim now, but you cannot see out. And then obviously the overexposed one just is exposing brick, some wood, uh, some wood down here as well, and that's it. So what I do is I shoot this to expose the inside perfectly with HDR bracketing photos, and then I shoot another three set that are exposed perfectly for the windows. So now you can see out the windows really well, uh, and they look very nice. And then the underexposed, you can see a little bit more detail in the sky. It was obviously an overcast gray day, but you can see the detail a kind of bluish tint and then the overexposed you can see the detail in we'll go in there's gonna be some noise though uh, on the siding of the house next door so you can see a little bit more detail there so what we do is we start with the first photo of these six and what we're gonna do is we're gonna edit appropriately for this first photo um, I use a preset and I'll walk you through this preset so I'm just gonna click on it and it's it's subtle but it does do changes so it changed the vignetting of the canon 16 to 35 f4 lens that i use so it took out the vignetting automatically um, i cleaned up some noise in here um, i upped the clarity uh, the white levels are up a little bit the blacks are down um, you know so it'll look a little bit cleaner uh, the highlights i bring almost all the way down and you can if you want and then the shadows I bring up. I can even bring them up more if I wanted. And we have not touched exposure or contrast yet, but uh, sharpening, um, I do sharpen it a bit. These are gonna be online. These are not gonna be printed. And if they were printed, they're gonna be small prints and nobody's gonna notice. So that's why I do the sharpening. And then I also do the noise reduction as well. Um, and that is honestly about it. And then when it comes to color correcting, I usually came and speak. Usually just click on this tool. I look for a area that is, um, got a little bit of color knowing that this is a white ceiling and I'll click on it. And it was, yeah, it went a little bit cooler. Um, so it was a little subtle and I don't mind that these are cool lights. Uh, in two ways, I guess. They're cool looking and they're just cool in color. And so basically, you know, you could warm this up a little bit if you wanted. I mean, we could bring it up a little bit to get some more. Uh, I don't want to get too much. I usually shoot on the cool side. 
and I love Canon because Canon color just pops. I mean, it looks great. Um, I have not edited Sony, but I don't want to. <laughs> Maybe one day I'll switch, but for right now, this is perfect. So when you get this to what you like, and I think, well, exposure is good. Um, I like the peaks to be kind of to the right of the histogram. Uh, that's probably as bright as I want to get it in here. And I might actually up the shadows just a tad here more. And since I did that, I'm going to bring the exposure down a bit. And so to me, if this was the only photo I took, this is the most detail that I really can get out of it that looks good without totally ruining the photo. And by the way, I shoot medium raw, um, shoot raw, whatever raw, small raw, medium raw, large raw, full raw, whatever it is, um, just because you have leverage. I shoot medium because I'm transferring these photos to clients all the time and I have to manage a ton of them. I have several shoots a week. I'm in dozens of houses. Um, I need my workflow to go fast and that's why I do medium raw. So after you've picked all this, um, you are going to hold your shift key, bring your mouse over, and left click on the end of the six. So the underexposed photos here, you're gonna also select those by left clicking on the last one. And so now they're all selected, then come over and hit sync. Make sure all of these are selected right here. Hit synchronize. And now the setting of the first one is on all of them. And so let's go look at the middle exposed one. And you can see some detail outside, it's not bad. You know, the color is cooler than you would want it for an outside shot, uh, but it's not super bad. I've seen, seen better, seen worse. Uh, but then we're gonna get over, here I'll show you the overexposed one real quick too. All right, and overexposed, you can see the uh, details a little bit more clearer now in the brick and everything, we'll zoom in. Uh, so detail there, and just remember, this is zoomed in uh, three to one. Nobody's gonna be looking that close in this wide angle. And so now we're gonna bring it over to the expose correctly for windows. And what I do is, um, the only thing I'll correct now is, well, first of all, I'm gonna switch it to daylight. And I'm gonna want it a little bit cooler. And I'm gonna bring it to a two to one. So it zooms out a little bit. Um, so we're gonna go a little bit cooler here because that's what the day looked like. I mean, it was, it didn't look that yellowish. <laughs> and then I'm gonna bring the highlights up. And the reason I bring the highlights up is when you shove this in HDR or if you're using uh, Creative Cloud and you have the HDR inside of your uh, Lightroom, um, it's, it's gonna look a little bit duller in the middle photo. And that's why I will bring up the highlights here just so there's a little bit more brightness. And yeah, let's zoom out. And so this is what the main photo looks like. I may even bring up the exposure just a tad, but uh, not bad. I mean, that looks good. And you can almost just take this photo and overlay it on the other one for the windows and it would be fine. Uh, but now that since you have it selected right here, then you will hold down shift and then left click on the last one. So now all three of these are uh, together. Then you'll hit sync another time, synchronize, make sure all of those boxes are checked. And let's just look at them real quick. All right, and so the underexposed looks good. The overexposed looks good. You have some detail over here. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna check the first one and then you are gonna hold shift and click on this last one. So all six of these are um, together. And then hold down control shift E for exporting and make sure it goes to the folder you want it to go to. And what I do is I even shrink it a little bit more. I make sure it's no bigger than you know two megabytes and the megapixels are no larger than 11, just because it's easy export. They're gonna be using it for web. Nobody's gonna be pixel peeping on this. And then I'll export. 
Okay, so this is the first photo that was bracketed through HDR. All right, I'm gonna stop myself right here. I kind of went ADD and skipped a photo. I'm gonna come back to the one we just edited, but I wanna show you this one and kind of explain first before we continue what I did. I uh, put it through HDR software. If you have Creative Cloud and you're using uh, Photoshop or using uh, Lightroom CC, you can put it through that um, HDR software. I don't, so I have separate HDR software that I use. So this is the final look of the HDR, but not exposing the window. So we're gonna pop into it now. This should make more sense. And you can see detail now, you can see it in the light, you can see inside, the windows aren't great. You can't see out the windows. Uh, but the one that is exposed correctly, you can. Uh, it's white balanced for the outside as well for a cloudy day, so it looks good. And we're gonna take these photos and we're gonna bring them into a software called GIMP. Now, if you have Photoshop, you can definitely use Photoshop. GIMP is Photoshop, it's a freeware open source software. It does not cost a thing. You can Google GIMP2 and download it. Again, I'm cheap. I don't have Photoshop or the new Lightroom. I will probably eventually upgrade and use it, but I just use uh, Premiere Pro and After Effects for video editing. Um, Lightroom 5 I've been using obviously um, for quite a while. So off that tangent, if you go into it, you just pull in the picture, do the first one, and then you've got your layers right here, and then we will bring in the next one. I will enlarge this, and we will then up here in the right corner, and so here are some of the editing. We're under the layers. All you have to do is just make sure you're clicked on the first one, right click, go to add alpha channel, alpha channel. Then you are gonna hit the lasso over here like you're a cowboy. And we are going to zoom in 100%. And now we're gonna start cutting. So if you click there, click here, and then we are going to wanna work around this. It's not gonna be perfect. Uh, light fixture. And you're just hitting the outline. And then connect it by clicking on the first point. Now it's all selected. And then you just hit the delete key on your keyboard like that. And so now you can see out the windows and you'll do the same thing right here. And we'll go out to 50%. And that looks pretty good. I mean, you can see out the windows just fine now. And so this photo is perfect. In GIMP, all you have to do then is go to File, Export. Uh, you'll export the image. You can call it whatever you want or you can override. I would just override it, hit Replace. And I usually go down to about 80% quality um, and then do make sure that it is optimized um, and progressive because then it's a little bit more effective on the web for accessing and for opening. So that's what I do. Uh, let me show you one that's a little bit more difficult to do. All right, so right click, add alpha channel. So make sure that is on top. And we will zoom in to 200%. Oops, I did not mean to do that. I'm just gonna kind of select that to get it off. Okay, lasso it. Now, these are the windows we did on the last one, so there's a little bit of overlap. These are easy. Where it gets a little bit more difficult is right here. Because if you were to select this part and say, hey, I'm gonna select this whole window and then delete, well, now the white trim is black and it doesn't look as good. 
in some cases you can get away with it and it actually will look good. Um, and you know, you probably could get away with it here. Let's uh, just zoom out to see what that looks like. So I mean, it really doesn't look horrible, but let's go back into 200%. And if you hit Control Z, it'll redo or go back. So we'll do that. Um, my advice, is take your time and just do it within each one separately. It's gonna look better in the long run because then you've got the white trim still that matches the, um, the rest of the trim. And I'm not doing a great job, but you get the idea. You just keep doing that. Uh, the final product would look like this. So you would have more white trim going on. Uh, this one, I chose to actually show this as a little bit darker, um, but I exposed more for the white on here. All right, that is pretty much it. That is how you expose properly for windows. You're gonna always wanna do a second set of images, exposed perfectly for the outside, and then you wanna overlay them in Photoshop or in my free version, GIMP questions, leave them on the bottom. Um, I can give you a link to uh, GIMP2 on where you can get it. It's an awesome freeware if you don't have Photoshop. Um, works great. So, anywho, see you next time, ish, or mm.